What are the most mispronounced words in Italian? Hey Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today I've got a list of words in Italian that are usually mispronounced by foreigners or people who don't speak Italian. Now at one point I will make the video the most mispronounced words in Italian by Italians because that happens too. Oh my gosh, it happens too. Different kind of words, but it does happen. Today I'm focusing on foreigners, not because I want to make fun of people who don't speak Italian, absolutely I wouldn't dare. It's simply because I think this could be a good way for most of you who don't speak Italian to learn how these words are actually pronounced, just for fun. All right, so let's jump right into it. The first word is going to be the word. How did you pronounce it? How did you pronounce it, you muppet? It's usually mispronounced bruschetta or bruschetta, but it's actually pronounced bruschetta. 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 As a little pronunciation tip, whenever you see CH in Italian, look at it and imagine it as a K. Within the Italian alphabet, which has less letters than the English alphabet, we do have the sound K, but we don't have a letter to represent it. We don't have the letter K, which is why we use CH as a way to recreate the K sound. When it comes to the double T, as I was saying, sometimes it's mispronounced bruschetta, and other times it's mispronounced bruschetta. Obviously, the latter, usually it's a mispronunciation that happens either with Americans or with Australians. The reason why is because Usually Americans and Australians have a specific linguistic phenomenon when it comes to the pronunciation of T's in English that is called, technically, flapping. And flapping is the pronunciation or rendition of a T sound into a soft D. This is how linguists consider the American beautiful. That's of course absolutely fine when they speak their own language, but when you speak Italian, you should try and get rid of that if you want to sound more authentic. Now in this case there are two T's. If they only had one T, Bruschetta. Two T's. Bruschetta. Bruschetta. The next one is going to be a name, it's a very famous name, and it's this. How do you pronounce it? Well, people usually mispronounce it as Versace, even in that frigging song that it's in every TikTok and it drives me nuts. The one that goes, I can have my Gucci on, I can have my Louis Vuitton. I hate that song. But at one point she goes, I look good in my Versace dress, so she, she's mispronouncing it. It's Versace. If you have enough time and money to buy a Versace dress, please learn how to pronounce it, particularly if you're making a freaking famous song about it. Versace. 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 Little general tip for you, this letter is never pronounced E in Italian. It's always pronounced like the English word red. In standard Italian and some accents it does have two versions, I'll dive into that in a dedicated video onto the seven vowels of Italian, but in no accent is ever pronounced E. Next one, this word is usually mispronounced and it is really my is mispronounced as baloney. Uh, I think it's because sometimes it is spelled in a way that it would make sense to read it baloney and then I think people kind of do a an association and they pronounce this baloney as well, but there's a GN and there's a freaking A. And this is not French. I don't hate French, but I do hate the way they spell things. This is the name of a famous Italian northern city, and the city is pronounced Bologna. Bologna. And depending on your accent, the ny sound can be stronger, or it can be very gentle, particularly in northern accents. But it's definitely not Bologna. Bologna. As a Sicilian, the next one, please get it right. Please, please, just, I'm asking. As a friend, please. Cannoli. You're like, yeah, that's how I pronounce it. I say cannoli. Great. But cannoli is plural. One, cannolo. Two, cannoli. So that Instagrammer, streamer, TikToker, I don't even know what she is, that called her dog, single, cannoli. She should have called the dog cannolo, because it's one. If she has multiple dogs, they would all be called cannolo, 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 but when she refers to all of them, she could say, cannoli, come here, then it's good. But one single, cannoli, eh. So, little Italian tip, the I at the end, in the majority of cases, refers to plurality, which is why a lot of Italian surnames tend to finish with an I, because the idea is, it's a multitude, it's a family, like the very famous northern surname Rossi, or even my surname, Urbani, tend to have that E, which is spelled as an I, because it's a plurality, it's a family. Oh, this one is great, this one is great. So how would you read this? 
I've heard people read this in like nochi. I think that's the way most people that don't know how to pronounce it read it, nochi, which is actually funny because in this case it's not a matter of, oh, you, you didn't sound right or authentic but I can understand what you're talking about. In this case, the first time I heard someone saying, oh, I really like nochi, I thought they meant walnuts or hazelnuts or nuts in general because nochi spelled N-O-C-I just means nuts in Italian, walnuts usually. This instead is pronounced gnocchi. So GN once again is like the N with a little thing in Spanish and it's pronounced, very technical there, and it's pronounced ñ. So ñ, we just said before, CH is a K sound, so gnocchi. Gnocchi. Literally. It's not that your Italian friend is trying to be an asshole. When you tell him nochi, he has no idea what you're on about. This one is kind of interesting because that's the name of a famous island off the coast of Naples. I've been there multiple times. And I noticed that people mispronounce this Capri. Like they tend to put, or Capri, they tend to put the stress at the end, which is something in, in the majority of cases French people do. So I don't know if it's something that they, they heard a French say it, maybe a French said Capri, and so they're like, oh, that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, but it's in Italy, so maybe don't listen to the French in this case. In Italian we say Capri, Capri. So the stress is on the A ah sound, not at the end. No one says, hey, let's go to Capri. It's Capri. Once again, since we are talking about islands, the island of... Well, if you said Stromboli... No. Stromboli. Stromboli. Now, I've already mentioned this idea of people tend to put the stress where Italian usually puts it as a language even when they're not supposed to. I mentioned it on my previous video on whether or not you should learn Italian. If you, I'll refer you to that one, so I'm not going to go into too technical onto this. But this is one of those cases where, even though Italian doesn't usually do this, we put the stress at the beginning. It happens quite a bit in Italian, but the over majority of words in Italian tend to have a stress in the penultimate vowel, but not in this case. It's stromboli. Stromboli. This is interesting because if you like sandwiches and you like Italian food, you have had panini. Now, panini, if that's how you pronounce it, that's correct, but it's a similar situation with cannoli. Panini is plural, so you can have many panini. You can like panini in general, but if you are eating one, you're not eating a panini, you're eating a panino. Now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna group together two words that I think have a similar situation and it's these two words here. Now if you read them calzone and provolone then yeah that's not the way we say it. So it's, I guess it's fine if you're speaking between Americans or you're ordering food at an American restaurant everyone is American it's okay it's not a big deal but if you are speaking to an Italian it's nice to at least know how we say these since the, we, we created these words. It's the same situation that I mispronounce words in English all the time but I try to say them as close as possible to how people when native say them. So in this case we say provolone calzone provolone calzone and then you eat it okay this is a very famous one it's, it's a type of coffee and you know how coffee how important coffee is in the italian culture now people tend to say this espresso so with an x there is no x so we pronounce it espresso espresso the funny thing is that we don't actually say it in the sense that yes technically considering the method of extraction it is an espresso but because that's the default way of making coffee in Italy, no one says, dammi un espresso. Un espresso, per favore. Vorrei del caffè espresso, però, eh? We just say, un caffè, per favore. People just refer to an espresso as simply coffee. So you say, un caffè, per favore. And then you'll sound like a real Italian. Okay, this is an interesting one because it has to do with Starbucks. And since I live in America, this is kind of... I'm interested in the marketing reason as to why they didn't go for small, medium and large and they went for tall, which, I mean, what, how is tall the shortest cup that they sell? I, I don't get it. I would have thought that the tall one is the big one, but no, the tall is short, bear with me, grande. Then they have venti. Grande is the only one that is oh, great. Yes, the big one, grande, grande means big, I get it. Tall, I don't get it. Venti, hear me out. Venti in Italian has two possible translations. It either means 20 or it means wins. Oh, but I'm sure there is a reason. Maybe 20 is the, the, the number of, I don't know, kilograms of sugar in it. Uh, I'm not gonna say caffeine because caffeine is gonna be like 180. 
I don't know, I'm sure there is a reason. There is a reason why they chose number 20, because I seriously doubt that they meant wins. Would have been poetic though. It would have been like the winds of coffee. Maybe it does mean wins. Anyways, pronunciation. It's not venti, it's venti. 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 And this connects to our last two words, minestrone, not minestroni, and salame, not salami. Now, once again, when it comes to salame, sometimes it can be spelled with an I. In that case, it's kind of a less common plural. You can say salami, but salame, usually singular, and it's pronounced e, salame. Okay, but if you have any questions, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this list and you had a little fun and perhaps learned something useful, particularly if you're studying Italian and you want to sound more authentic in your pronunciation. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for joining Metatron's Academy. Now go get some pasta.